Welcome back everybody to Synalytics Crypto. My name is Mike, thank you for joining me here today. I've got some big news to go over with you guys. Three different things we're gonna be talking about here today, but we're gonna be starting it off with more El Salvador news because <clears throat> I am loving what I'm seeing in the news because I believe this is the first domino to fall in what is eventually going to be the global way uh, moving forward for Bitcoin and it's all good news. So before we get into that, you guys, let's take a look at the market cap and a couple of these um, price action indicators here. <clears throat> market cap has crossed over the 1.7 trillion mark today. Uh, Bitcoin crossed over the $41,000 mark a little bit earlier today. Uh, that's up from yesterday's video of about 1.67 billion, so uh, trillion rather. That's uh, that's good. We like that. So Bitcoin sitting at 40,000 and a couple hundred. We're looking good. The seven days back up to 13 and a half or 13.1 percent. That's also good. Ethereum hanging well above the 2,500 dollar mark. These two, of course, are the biggest health indicators for the entire market. So uh, I like what I'm seeing. We we seem to be starting um, the path to recovery. That doesn't mean that there won't be more drops ahead, even in the very very, very near future because we've got a lot of good news and a lot of FUD and they all kind of combine to jumble up the price action and it can get pretty crazy out there. But um, from what I'm seeing, I'm not quite seeing a momentum swing yet, although a lot of people are actually talking about that being the case. Um, I personally am not ready to throw some of my fiat that's been sitting on the side for several weeks now. I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting and I'm not going to rush into anything at all, but I do like what I'm seeing in the price action. So uh, always take you know your best informed strategy of entering and exiting this market. Um, but there's still some pretty good buys out there, even though you know we obviously had a bottom, at least somewhat of a local bottom recently. Um, this could certainly be the beginning of an uptrend. Now we will have confirmation of that probably in a few more days, depending on of course what Bitcoin does, and then of course what Ethereum does as well. But Cardano's looking good at about a dollar fifty-seven. I mean, the high was about a buck higher than that not too long ago. Um, let's look at a couple other that I really like here. Uh, Litecoin has been struggling, of course, along with the entire market. But as goes Bitcoin, so typically does Litecoin. Still, a lot of news. Uh, uh, good news coming up for Litecoin. I think anything under two hundred dollars is a decent buy. It's not the best buy you can get. I mean, obviously we could go lower like i've said before chainlink you guys chainlink is starting to make a little bit of a comeback and that's good because i keep saying that chainlink is highly undervalued for all the partnerships it has for all the integration that it has very very deep into crypto almost everybody that comes out that has to do anything with anything important is partnering with chainlink because the api is still the dominant one and it probably will always remain that way i cannot see any api coming and knocking off Ch chainlink off its top spot polygon buck 54 uh you guys know i love matic um, it's one of the ones I've been keeping an eye on. I'm trying to find a better entry price. Obviously, there was a pretty good one just a couple days ago, but like I said, I'm a little hesitant to throw some money at things when we're still on the decline. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Uh, Internet computer, ICP, knocked way off its high. I mean, this thing was at, at its all-time high was over $800. So I don't know too much about the project. I did buy a little bit not too long ago when I was actually in Mexico. I think I bought it like 177 So it's definitely down from where I purchased it, but I didn't buy a lot of it. So it's not really hurting my portfolio too much. Theta Network coming out with a, um, a, their main mainnet coming up, and a lot of people really believe very highly in Theta. I, it, I have a hard time investing in it personally because I could have, in fact, I, I had some at like 13 cents a very, very long time ago. So it's just one that I've kind of stayed away from. I'm not going to go too much farther because we're still sitting around the top 20 where I think is the best place to be right now. Of course, a lot of altcoins, if um, Bitcoin starts to gain a lot of traction, uh, it's going to flow downhill into the altcoins. I'm not looking at small caps right now, you guys. It's just not time for that. We'll get into that when the market dictates it. So anyways, let's get on with the news here because these this is very important and I really like what I'm seeing. I'm going to read a little bit of this article, not the whole thing, but uh, it has definitely piqued my interest since I focused on El Salvador last night coming out and saying that I believe this is the biggest news in the history of Bitcoin because we're talking about a sovereign country adopting it as their second currency. And here's what's kind of becoming of that. There's a lot of lot of things happening since what El that tiny little country just completely shook the world market by announcing what they did and it's there are people on both sides. Let's read a little bit of this. This was the week of El Salvador. Since President, I'm not going to slaughter his name out of respect, um, his announcement in Miami at Bitcoin 2021 that El Salvador would adopt Bitcoin as legal tender, the internet has been ablaze. The country's parliament has since made it official, voting with a su uh, super majority, which is 
obviously a good thing you want to see, uh, in favor of the bill. There have also been talks of setting up mining operations in the country and allowing investors with 3 BTC or more to take up El Salvadorian residency, prompting other Central American countries to signal interest in following their lead. It's big, guys. I have long said that the first country to officially adopt Bitcoin will be a pioneer, and this week El Salvador did just that. So, a couple things to say here. Um, like I said in yesterday's video, it is the first domino to fall. All of the neighboring countries, I think, would be the first one to probably try to attempt to adopt that. I don't know if they could pass that through their countries as quickly as El Salvador did, uh, but you never know. We don't know too much about these governments, at least I don't personally. Uh, I would love to see a domino and a, and a chain, a waterfall event happen to where everybody would just kind of regionally start to adopt it first and then it would eventually spread out throughout the rest of the world. But it makes sense for these countries that neighbor El Salvador to adopt that because now you can now trade and interact both as a government um, and as the, the people of those countries in Bitcoin, which would open up an entire market of trade and commerce, which is exactly what Bitcoin is here for. It's just most of the rest of the world is taking their sweet time and admitting what ultimately is going to be the fate of Bitcoin and um, its global adoption throughout the world. So I found it interesting that um, there have also been talks of setting up mining operations in the country and allowing investors with three BTC or more to take up El Salvadorian residency. That's fantastic. Uh, I wish I had three BTC sitting around that I could use to actually go out and get El Salvadorian um, residency because you know what? Honestly, I would. I really would. In fact, I am planning a trip. Nothing set in stone. I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of when I would be able to do this, but I want to go to El Salvador to see what it's like to transact in Bitcoin there and to find out what the local economy is like since this has been enacted. Now it's new and it's fresh and I'm sure it hasn't really fully integrated into the country. It's gonna take some time to do that, but uh, I would love to go down there and check it out. And if I find that I like what I see and things are looking really good and you know, if I can trade my way up to three BTC, why not? It's not like you have to give them the, the Bitcoin to, to join their country. You just have to be holding onto that. So that's a pretty good way to find an entrance into a residency, into a country that I've heard is very beautiful, wonderful people, wonderful food. Uh, it's in a beautiful place in the world. I mean, why wouldn't you want to explore that option? So I believe that things like this are going to get more people to think like I'm thinking and okay, what's up with El Salvador? Let's go check it out. Let's possibly fall in love with the place and become a resident there. And that's going to be really good, really good for their economy. And I see nothing but good things happening for El Salvador, for the country and for the people. And I think that's going to be the catalyst that's going to launch other countries in the regional area to want to adopt this and probably adopt it quickly. So i um, not going to read the rest of that. That's pretty much the, the point of that whole uh, article is that things are going on in El Salvador that are really good. And I mean, here we go. Central American financial institution to help El Salvador implement its Bitcoin legalization. Fantastic. I know the IMF has come out and they're not in favor of what's going on. Of course they're not because that threatens their control and that is not a good thing for them. But it's nice to see that other people are coming to help El Salvador because El Salvador might have a battle on their hands. The IMF is a very, very far-reaching, very powerful country, especially because El Salvador does use the dollar. And I know that the IMF probably supplies them with a lot of uh, inflow of money or whether they offer them to purchase U.S. debt, which I think is a horrible idea at this point. Why would you want to purchase something that's uh, approaching $30 trillion, if not over $30 trillion in debt, and printing more like it's going out of style? I don't quite know. Oh, it's right here. We got our, our friend, the toilet. I'm going to induce a couple friends here today because... You know, we got our friend the toilet paper. We've got the uh, the overprinted U.S. dollar that is basically not worth the paper it's printed on. It's just held up by uh, faith faith in the U.S. government, which I have absolutely zero faith in. Uh, and you know, my old friend here, La Planta Corazon. See, if I ever move to El Salvador, the problem is I don't think I can take her with me because they don't shine too lightly on uh, taking vegetation over uh, over borders of international territories. So. We'll see about that. I won't leave her abandoned. I'm sure my son will do a good job taking care of her while I'm gone. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I uh, don't really want to read this whole article, but um, let's read a little bit of this. Central Bank of Economic Integration, Kabe, uh, an institutional multilateral development bank headquarters in Honduras, said that it will work with the El Salvadorian government to implement Bitcoin as the country's second legal tender, which is fantastic. They're going to need help with those kinds of things. According to Reuters on Monday, June 14th, the executive president, uh, Don, Dante Mossi, revealed that the bank plan that the bank's plans at a new conference. Mossi said that the the major financial institution would offer technical assistance to El Salvador to assist the country in legalizing Bitcoin. Um, 
this is an interesting part here I read right here. As reported by Crypto Potato, JP Morgan, <laughs> JP Morgan implied that the Central American country's decision to make BTC its second legal tender has no economic benefit. Have you ever heard a bigger, more blatant lie in your life? I mean, I've heard a lot of things from a lot of people and a lot of things from JP Morgan. I mean, the guy basically came out and told people a long time ago not to buy Bitcoin. And if you work for him and he finds out you buy Bitcoin, he's going to fire you. Then he turns uh, heel and he goes ahead and he starts you know, talking positive for a little while about Bitcoin. The fact that they're coming out and saying that it's not going to economically benefit that country is... <laughs> I'm speechless. It's obviously not true. I, I think that's absolute manipulation and it's going to prove um, them to be as stupid as they actually really are. This is all a, a ploy to stop the spread of... Uh, both people and governments and uh, financial corporations from achieving financial um, uh, security away from the legacy system. Uh, JP Morgan being one of the biggest banks in the world is definitely a part of the legacy system and they are responsible for most of the silver and gold manipulation. This is not me conjecturing, this is a fact. Uh, and so they have their own self-interest at control. They don't care about the people. They don't care about the government. They care about themselves and they care about what they're doing. And this statement says a lot here. It, if they weren't worried about this, and they should be, they wouldn't come out and say these kinds of things. They'd have no business saying If it really had no economic benefit, they probably wouldn't even need to come out and say it. They would just kind of sit back and laugh and, and just watch the whole thing self-destruct, right? But that's not what's going to happen. I predict the exact opposite is going to happen. I predict El Salvador is going to thrive because of this, and I predict that their neighboring countries are also going to be getting involved. I've heard a lot of stories about a lot of presidents from those local uh, countries right next to them in South um, and Central America posting their laser eyes on their Twitters. That's usually a good sign. Things start to um, kind of fall into place after that. Uh, let's read this. The Wall Street giant added that the country's move could jeopardize its negotiations with the International Monetary Fund. Yes, of course. Uh, I just kind of went over that a little bit. The IMF is not happy about that. And so what if it jeopardizes them? If they really get a Bitcoin, a robust Bitcoin or and or cryptocurrency economy going down in that country, why would they need the IMF? And that's the whole problem that the IMF has. They don't want people to not need them because they become irrelevant. And so I applaud everything that's happening down in El Salvador. I'm a huge fan. For the first time in my life, I actually want to go to that. I mean, I didn't ever really think too much about El Salvador, but now my interest is going down there myself, spending my time, my money, traveling down there, making YouTube videos, all because of what happens. And I'm just some dude sitting at home in Southern California in my room making YouTube videos. And I'm sure that if I feel this way, I'm not the only one. So. Um, really good stuff to go over here, you guys. Not going to read the rest of this article. Once again, check it out. But this is the kind of stuff that we need to know because the world is moving very, very rapidly towards basically Bitcoin adoption on a massive, massive level. And these are all really good things for our industry. So here's a little bit of proof as to what is going on because let's get further into this. Small Bitcoin transfers in El Salvador have surged. You don't say. I'm not surprised. Now tell me how that could be bad for an economy. Just tell me, JP Morgan. Tell me, Jamie Dimon. <laughs> Ugh. El Salvador, where Bitcoin is being embraced on an unprecedented level, has seen BTC transfers under $1,000 surge this year. Think about how good that is for the people of El Salvador. With its president making its first country to recognize Bitcoin as legal tender and inviting miners to set up shop among its volcanoes, Awesome. El Salvador is currently at the epicenter of the Bitcoin universe. Fantastic. And even though these developments are relatively new, an embrace of BTC has been demonstrably underway in the country's everyday use of Bitcoin as, financial, as a financial real. Everyday use. That's what it's all about. Monthly Bitcoin transfers of under $1,000, a proxy for money sent to the country from El Salvadorians working abroad, taking care of their families, beautiful, totaled 1.7 million in May compared to $424,000 early in the year. According to data from blockchain analysis, uh, firm Chainalysis, uh, shared exclusively with Reuters, such transfers hit a peak of 2.5 million in March through a comparison with the previous year was unbelievable. Fantastic. Um, don't really think I need to read the rest of this because the point is, is that Bitcoin is already gaining traction in this and it's only, it's less than a week old as far as it being approved. I think it was approved last Thursday. So, just imagine the upwards trajectory that's going to continue with this um, 
I just, this is why I love Bitcoin. This is why I love crypto. This is why I'm passionate about this space, you guys, because this is what I saw coming when I first got involved back in late 2016. I saw the writing on the wall. I saw the forest through the trees. And, and to see this happen, you know, in, in my lifetime and, and before my very eyes and to see it happen so rapidly, I feel like, I almost feel like a, like a proud dad over here, you know, just, just loving what I'm seeing, you guys. It's good for people. And if it's good for people, I can get behind that. Uh, next piece of news, you guys, which is obviously bullish as well, and gosh, I've, I've just got to uh, give MicroStrategies, uh, Michael Saylor, his props again because this guy is just full steam ahead. I mean, he just doesn't know anything but going full bore, and it, wow, I mean, he's the guy that kind of started off this whole Bitcoin run in the first place, and he's talking to all his billionaire friends and all these corporations. They're they're either buying or they've already bought or they're thinking about buying. They're kind of in one of one of three categories. So um, I think this dip was manufactured in fact for a lot of them to probably try and get their way in, and I think a lot of them have. We won't know until the end of the quarter because that's when they have to release their quarterly reports, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this gain more traction. MicroStrategy succeeds, succeeds in raising $500 million to buy more Bitcoin. Another half a billion on the uh, on the books there. I mean, this guy is going to end up being one of the richest dudes in the world, uh, considering we all know where, where Bitcoin is going. Imagine when Bitcoin gets to a quarter million. Imagine when Bitcoin gets to $500 uh, million. All the Bitcoin that these, these whales are sitting on, these guys are going to be the richest, most influential people in the entire world. There's a reason why smart people who know about economics are buying Bitcoin, because they see what there is to see. And they're not convincing themselves that uh, anything else is taking place to the contrary. MicroStrategy has successfully sold $500 million in secured notes. These fun the funds will be used to buy around 11,900 Bitcoins at the current price. Very important, current price. MicroStrategy stockpiles are up 12.7.57% in the last 14 hours. Wow. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of this because there's a little bit more to talk about. He's not done yet. The man is not done yet. <laughs> MicroStrategy may sell $1 billion in stock to buy more Bitcoin. This is piled right on top of the news of them already succeeding in raising the funds to buy another half a billion. I, I forget what the total is. I probably could have read it in that article, but you can go ahead and read it too. It's part of DYORing. Uh, this guy's pedal to the metal. He's, he's all in. The man is all in. And he is a champion of what Bitcoin really, really means and really, really is. And I love the fact that he's not keeping it to himself, you guys. This man's out there on a mission. And uh, I love what I'm seeing. Stop us if you've heard this one before. MicroStrategy may be, may be gearing up to buy more Bitcoin as much as a billion dollars worth. I wouldn't put it past him. If he gets the money, that's exactly what he's going to do with it. Uh, the cloud software company today filed paperwork with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, everybody's best friend, for a proposed public sale of a Class A common stock via an open market sale agreement. I'm not a stock guy. I don't understand what that means, but I'm sure he does. <laughs> This type of open-ended agreement allows the firm to sell stock from time to time depending on its needs. MicroStrategy launches at the market securities offering of for flexibility to sell up to 1 billion of its Class A common stock over time. Bottom line is, dude can't get enough Bitcoin. Probably one of the smartest guys on the planet. And here we have Elon Musk over here who has basically turned himself into the biggest jerk of all time. I don't think he can find a friend under a rock, uh, although he could probably buy a lot of friends. Uh, you know, we got... A tale of two stories here. We've got a champion and we've got a guy that used to be a hero that is turning into a zero and is just muttering and making himself look like a fool. Y'all know I am not a fan of Elon Musk. Um, I, I didn't know too much about him before he really dipped into the whole Bitcoin fray. I know that he's rocked the boat a lot and I know that he's causing himself a lot more problems in his company, a lot more problems than he's doing himself any good. So, But on the other end of that, Michael Saylor, Michael Saylor is pushing us forward. Is now a good time to be invested in Bitcoin? Absolutely. I mean, when is it not a good time to be involved in Bitcoin? Obviously, if you bought the top of the market in uh, late 2017 or early 2018 at just under 20,000, and then you experienced that crash and had to ride it out like I did, or whether you bought it at the local top here not too long ago, which was $64,000, and you watched it ride all the way down to a over 50% loss, uh, if you hold on to what you have purchased, you are not playing into the hand and into the games of the whales and the manipulators and the bots and all of the short sellers and all of the liquidators. That's the only power you guys that, that you have. Okay, so my advice to be with if somebody who's who's in over their head, if you bought at fifty thousand or whatever, just wait it out. 
just wait it out. And if you get the opportunity to buy it lower, buy it lower because now you're bringing your cost average down. That's the only way to battle these kinds of dips in the market that we're seeing, these pullbacks, these crashes, whatever they, they may be. This is the way to do it, you guys. And like I've said before, hopefully you're not playing with your lunch money so you don't starve. You should never put money into this market that you cannot afford to either lose or hold on to for a while and let it sit and let it grow and let it come back because Bitcoin will always be making new all-time highs. That, I believe, is a fact because of what I've seen from its existence. If you zoom out, you can always see there's always a new all-time high. If you think $64,000 recently was the all-time, all-time high, you're, you're wrong. You're 100% wrong. We're not anywhere close to getting started. Let me remind you that El Salvador is uh, now legally transacting in Bitcoin in their country, and it's going to be good for everybody, and it is just the beginning. Bitcoin is just a big, fat, wobbly baby, just trouncing through the streets right now and and there's a lot more to come is what i'm trying to say there's a lot more to come so feel confident in what you're investing you're a lot better off being in btc that may be underwater a little bit than you are holding a whole bunch of us toilet paper dollars in your bank account last piece of news you guys this is an important piece of news and um, i enjoyed seeing this i saw it in two different places today let's think about this for a minute millennials there are a lot of millennial millionaires. Um, millennials are the ones who are kind of really inheriting all of the baby boomers wealth. And what are they doing with this wealth? Well, it looks like they're becoming investors, whether it's the stock market or whether it's gold and silver, which I do believe everybody should have a position in at some point, physical gold and silver. Um, and now a lot of them are moving into crypto. Check this out, 47% Almost half of the millennial millionaires have at least 25% of their wealth in crypto. That's Those are big numbers. We're talking about half of them, and we're talking about at least a quarter of their investments, their millions, multi-millions, whatever it may be, in crypto. If this doesn't tell you that being in crypto is a good place to be because this is where smart people are putting their money. People who are investors have probably learned a thing or two along their journey, just like I have. A lot of them making mistakes, but a lot of them also experiencing success and diving deeper. I mean, I haven't even really begun myself to scratch the surface of DeFi. I, I understand it, but I have not really grasped it and I have not actually entered into that. And DeFi is still growing. Ethereum is still growing. Bitcoin is still growing. Imagine what these stats are going to look like a year from now, two years from now, four years from now, after the next Bitcoin halving has already taken place and we're a year into it and we're experiencing a whole new bull run. These are the kinds of things that everybody should be looking into and considering before they start questioning what they've done with their money, investing in Bitcoin or crypto or whatever it may be, especially during pullbacks like this when you're feeling unconfident because all you see is the FUD on the CNBC and all the people talking this trash and all the people talking that trash and Bitcoin is not sustainable for the economy and, and or for the, um, for the earth and all that other stuff. Be confident in what you're in. You are in the right place. Whether you got in late, whether you got in early, whether you got in yesterday, you are in the right place. We are in the right place, all of us together going forward. As retailers, you guys, let's hold on to that slice of pie and let's not be able to uh, give what we've worked so hard for into the hands of the greedy and the whales. I mean, when people are sitting on you know thousands and thousands of Bitcoin, do, do they really, really, at the end of the day, do they really even need any more? It's more about uh, power and control at that point than achieving more wealth. Uh, either that or it's just uh, massive uh, greed, and I don't want to be any part of that. So I hope you guys don't either, and the best way to do that is to hold on to what you got. Hold strong, ride the waves, and enjoy life. Hey, you know I love you. Please, if you have not subscribed, hit that red button. Give me a thumbs up. The best thing you can do to support my channel, you guys, is just leave some comments below. Number one, I love interacting with you guys. Number two, I love what you hear, what you all have to say. Uh, and it's good for the algorithm and it helps get my videos out there to a wider audience. And I believe more people out there need to find the truth, need to find the balance, and most importantly, need to stay positive-minded. Peace.